This lecture has been made available to you courtesy of the American Numismatic okay. Society. So, Manuel Gonzalez is a numismatist, an archaeologist, and a curator of the Museo di Preistoria di Valencia, who specializes in the history of ancient Iberian coinage. At the Valencia Prehistoric Museum, is in charge of a numismatic collection of 30,000 pieces. He's also in charge of the permanent room history of money and has organized temporary exhibition, exhibits on ancient Iberian coin hoards and the history of Valencian coins. He also organized several numismatic conferences together with the University of Valencia. He's the author of over 40 articles and four books covering topics ranging from dye studies of specific mints to the circulation and iconography of the coinages of the Iberian Peninsula. Uh, together with Pere Pauri Bolas Allegre, he's also the scientific director of three digital projects, one on the coin finds in Sardinia, one on the collection of Iberian coinage Vidal Valle, and most recently, and this is the topic of the talk today, if I understood correctly, Moneda Iberica, which focuses on the coinage issued in the Iberian Peninsula between the 6th and the 1st century BCE, and is strong of how many monetary types? 20,000? No, 4,000. 4,000, okay, no, that was the, so uh, is incredible. So. Uh, please welcome, so please join me in welcoming Manuel Gonzalez among us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, uh, good afternoon. Uh, it's a pleasure to participate in this fantastic initiative of the ANS. Thank you, Thea, and thank you, Emma, for the invitation, of course. This talk is divided into parts. In the first part, I will present briefly the main features of the ancient Iberian coinages, which were created by different cultures. The second part will present monedaiberica.org, the new digital catalog created three years ago, which has become the most complete reference for this series. From a current geopolitical perspective, these coinages include the productions of Spain, Portugal and the south of France, minted between the 6th and the 1st centuries BC. In general, we refer to this series as the ancient coinage of the Iberian Peninsula. Apart from the continental issues, the Punic coinages of the Ibiza Island are also included as a part of this geographical area. The Iberian Peninsula was a territory with a variety of cultures with different levels of social, political, and economic development. Some were located near the coast with innovative contacts with traders and navigators, while for the inland peoples, contacts with foreign cultures were less frequent. Different cultural groups minted civic series to a different extent. Around 220 cities produced their own coinages following different standards and models. The distinctive characteristic of the Iberian coinages is the variety of scripts of the coin legends, at least six different. Foreign cultural groups, like the Greeks, used their own Brighton system and their own meteorological standards. The production of Emporion was for many reasons outstanding, minting over 400 types and variants. The amount, this amount represents around 10% of all the Iberian series. The Punic means, more abundant, were concentrated in the southern coast. Gadir and Ebusus started minting in the fourth century BC, but the rest of the mints appeared after the second Punic war. However, the native populations use at least three types of local scripts. The phonetics of these scripts are known to us, but we know very little about the languages that they represent. The largest group is the so-called Iberian, which includes Northern and Southern means. 
the Northern Paleo-Hispanic was used in the Iberian area and was also employed to write the Siltiberian and Brasconian languages. The second local script is the Southern Paleo-Hispanic, which was used in the southeastern area of the peninsula. It was adopted by major means like Castulo and Obulco. The third one is the Tartessian or South Lusitanian script, which remains cryptic and is only recorded on the issues of Beuvian Salacia in Portugal. The last group is formed by the cities that minted with Latin legends. For the third century BC, the establishment of Roman colonies and the creation of Municipia marked the beginning of a new state in the monetary story of Hispania. This led to the provincial coinage of Hispania, presented in another long table by Pere Pau Ripollès a few weeks ago. To a large extent, the adoption of coinage in different areas was a consequence of the Second Punic War, where the Carthaginian Empire and the Roman Republic produced coins to cover their respective war efforts. While the Carthaginians minted the Sirius in Iberia, the Romans imported the currency, minting in Spain a few series of great interest for the Roman monetary history. The impact of the war economy had a decisive influence on the subsequent monetization of the Iberian peoples. However, long before, towards the late 6th century BC, the first coinages of the Iberian Peninsula were minted at the Phocean colony of Emporia. These coinages have a local purpose for a wide range of users, including Greeks and the native groups. Besides this colonial series, bullion and foreign currencies were also used to some extent, especially in the coastal area. Silver was so integrated in the commercial life, becoming another form of money. An example of this habit is the hoard of ingots from La Bastida de les Alcuses, dated in the fourth century BC. By 300 BC, Emporion changed the meteorological model to the drachma system, and the Rode started minting. By that time, the Punic cities of Gadir and Ebusus took also their first series. Lack of archaeological evidence makes it difficult to establish a certain date for their initial coinages. But these are the productions of Greek and Punic colonies. What about the local Iberian coinages? Arce Saguntum was the first local city that minted coins. This Iberian city started to formalize the use of silver bullion valued by weight. Its designs and art were adopted from a Greek Hellenistic cultural atmosphere, like this first Syria, which adopted Apollo for the obverse. The bulk of the local mints appeared much later and lasted until the end of the Republic with their bilingual series. The coin hoards buried during the years of the war include Iberian imitations of Emporion or drags, dragons from Ebusus, Gadir, Arce, and Saitabi. Most of them minted in a military context to meet some war expenses of the Roman side. This is presumably the evidence of a financial mechanism where local cities and Roman magistrates operated under some kind of agreement involving coin production. The introduction of Iberian means was a late, slow, and progressive, progressive process. For three centuries, Emporion, Rode, Ebusus, Gadir, and Arce were the only means in Iberia. The financing of the Second Punic War contribute in a decisive way to extend the coin use among the indigenous population, basically on the Mediterranean coastline. After the defeat of the Carthaginians, the Roman Senate decided to remain in the Iberian Peninsula in order to exploit its resources. 
This was the turning point for the massive creation of mints in Hispania under different cultural backgrounds. The creation of mints was closely linked with the process of conquest and romanization of Hispania. In this context, arises the question of how many local mints struck their coins under Roman control, permission, or supervision. The coinages were introduced in different circumstances, but in most cases, the mints were open in close connection with the Roman territorial advances. Emporion, a mint closely related with the Romans, keep minting after the war, marking the reverses with symbols like the contemporary Roman denarii. The features of the monetary designs are completely different in Hispania Quiterior and Hispania Ulterior. The types of the Quiterior province were rather uniform. This feature doesn't have a clear explanation since it's an habit adopted by different peoples. For the bronze units and the silver denarii, they prefer the male head on the reverse and the horseman with a spear, palm, or another object on the reverse. The obverse could represent the founding hero or a local divinity of the ethnic group, and the reverse could be adapted to fulfill values or beliefs of the elites of the Christian tradition. The quality of the silver coinages of the second and first century BC was relatively high. All silver coins were minted in the Citerior province, and the majority adopted the weight on the, of the contemporary Roman denarii, probably with an equivalent value. Despite some silver series could be struck for local purposes, the main part were minted in the river Ibero Valley, being the later more likely originated in a military context than struck to cover Roman regular taxes. On the contrary, the ulterior province adopted a great variety of designs. A few means adopted the South Iberian or South Palispanic script. On issues with Latin and Southern Iberian script, the types include a wide variety of portraits, animals, vegetables, and other objects on the reverses. These designs have been explained either as a reflection of the economic wealth or as religious symbols. In Phenopunic cities, the types reflect the Semitic cults with their main divinities and animals and animals and plants associated with them. A certain number of issues with odd legends were minted at uncertain places. Silver was only minted by Kadir, Ebusus, and to a little extent by Malacca. A singular mint is Beuoibion Salacia, which was the only who adopted the singular Sudlocitanian, Southwestern, or Tartessian script, frequently combined with Latin legends. Many native populations from the Spanish interior used Latin script from the beginning, but in a restricted way and for official aims, mainly for place names. This does not demonstrate that a majority of the population knew Latin. But the fact is that Latin issues only in bronze were very common in that province. This slide presents the big picture. It's a statistical overview of the metals and the sign of the ancient Iberian coinages. The size of the circles is approximately proportional to the coins actually preserved. The circle the circles are representative of the coin volume issued by the different groups. Greek and Punic coins are small in comparison with the big circle of local coinages, where Latin series are included due to the fact that it's not easy to split bilingual series. In a random mix of all the ancient Iberian coinages, this infographic gives an idea of the probability of finding a design. At first look, it's evident that male heads and horsemen were the most popular designs. Secondary symbols, signs of or specific attributes may only change the details of the main designs. During the second and the first centuries BC, 
The Spanish coinages were made in silver and bronze. The Iberian silver coins were presumably equivalent to the Roman denarii. They were hoarded together and the weights were pretty similar. The function of this series is uncertain because most of the mints with large outputs lack of a precise location. The only certain thing is that such amounts of silver doesn't fit well as the ordinary budgets of small cities. This series have been linked with the financing of the Roman army. Many doubts arise when trying to understand in which way this silver series were linked with the Roman economy or with the payment of the Iberian auxiliary troops. They were pretty common in the north of Hispania during the late Republic, while the Romans were conquering the interior. It's confusing to determine if they are related with salaries, with the manage of supplies, or even with conversions of the war spoils into coins to facilitate their distribution. The bronze and copper coins are less homogeneous. The identification of the native bronze denominations sometimes is a complex task. Many issues were minted following a high weight average, around 20 to 24 grams. But later, those coinages reduced their average to 9, 13 grams. While several mints put into circulation complete series of values, like this example of Kelsa, many others produced old series, which are more difficult to identify and arrange. This is the picture of the main denominations in circulation in the Iberian Peninsula from the Second Punic War to the end of the Republic. The Roman system had a great influence, but not every issue copied the Roman model. A serious problem is to find a suitable name for the local bronze units, which show a remarkable variety of weights. An interesting topic is to think about the values of these coins from the perspective of the users. It seems that the variety of systems, also mixing local and imported coins, left a lot of room for subjective coin valuation. For instance, in the site of Asyla, were found two important bronze hoards of different kinds. The Asyla hoards revealed two different patterns. The first one was interpreted of the bag of someone who visited many different places, while the second one was characterized as a sample of the coin circulation in the site of Athyla. In both hoards, the weights of the coins are far from being grouped together. There are some model peaks, but the general trend is that every possible weight between seven and 20 something is present. A similar situation is attested in the Roman camps of Numancia and Cáceres el Viejo. In both cases, imported and local coins circulated together with a remarkable variety of weights. Especially during the second and first centuries BC, many local systems were running in parallel, constantly evolving and coins could circulate for decades. The variety of meteorological systems is evident when combining in one single graph the averages of all the common series minted during the second and the first centuries BC. This mix of issues seems unrealistic, but in certain, in certain cases did occur as we have seen. The situation only came to an end with Augustus when a standardized system was implemented. Weight averages are known to us because reference catalogs include the necessary calculations. Printed catalogs of coin types are always the essential reference for the coinage of any period. The standard catalogs for the Iberian coinage have been the works of Vives and more recently of Villaronga. But the printed format has some limitations as it can only illustrate one specimen of its type. Searches are complicated and illustrations are very small. Maybe you're well aware that Pere Pau Ripollés is the leading Spanish numismatist. He's responsible of creating the so-called Valencian School, where many researchers have benefited from his teachings. 
The question here is that for years, he had a plan for publishing a new printed catalog of the Iberian coinages. This work was intended to be included as a future volume of Historia Numorum dedicated to Hispania. Pere Pau Ripollés retired last August and he made a donation of his archives to the Valencia Museum of Prehistory. This is, of course, a generous legacy. For 25 years, he created, for research purposes, a huge archive of index cards and he also prepared thousands of plaster cards from private and public collections. This unique archive of ancient Iberian coinages benefits greatly any research related with this topic. So in the year 2011, we started organizing the production of the Iberian mints, creating text documents with a complete arrangement of types tables with weights and diameters, and ordering images in folders. 200 text documents were prepared for describing the production of each mint, including new types and variants identified from the archive collected over the years. It is important to remark that these works are never completely original creations. A new catalog is always based on earlier works, which are modified, improved, and extended to update their contents. But this plan of publishing a printed book changed 10 years ago when Pere Pau get involved in the Numisma project. This meant a turning point because the working group was setting the digital basis for the research of ancient numismatics. He was aware of the new direction that catalogs were taking under the initiative of the ANS and was necessary to establish a new plan. Since then, we started attending digital meetings and we even organized one in Valencia. It was clear that the conversion of the catalog as a digital initiative was the only way to move forward. Now it's clear that digital resources have become the most powerful tool for a better understanding of the ancient coinages. With the basis of the numism ontologies, the capabilities of the web environment and the development of man management systems, it's possible to set the foundations of a new research and publication model. The standardization of concepts makes possible to link the contents of different projects. Digital images provide the required quality for displaying coins, and the databases are ready to handle any type of query. Our catalog was under preparation with the archives and the draft that we have. But we needed a solution for publishing the digital catalog. How did we start the digital project? The Moneda Iberica project has been built with Dedalo. In this case, the capabilities of the software are as important as the numismatic content itself. Dedalo is a web application that was born in Valencia 25 years ago for the management and research of cultural heritage. Dedalo is a long experience and powerful application, which has a lot of features, and most important of all, it's free software and it's open source. It includes a specific data model for numismatic research, which was created in 2017, and that has been continuously developed to date. At this point, we had the contents and the software, but we needed funding for launching the catalog. The problem was solved in 2018 when the project was released under the framework of the International ARC project in collaboration with the University of Oxford and the Bibliothèque Nationale de France. It was a three-year project directed by Andy Meadows, Frédéric Durat, and Pere Pau Ripollès. The Valencia Prehistoric Museum was a partner of this consortium. The art project was focused on the Greek coinages, but the MIP catalog should include also series from other cultures of the Iberian Peninsula. It should be remembered that Emporion and Rode were the only Greek mints of the Iberian Peninsula. 
because the rest are included in these packages because the catalogs of ANSI and the variant series have always been treated as a single group. The ARCH project has been developed in the University of Oxford and it's a major milestone because it's the first global Greek coinage catalog. As Andy Meadow says, it's, it seems incredible to have achieved this incredible portal. The ARC website is an overarching portal which displays together the types and coins dispersed in different projects, including the contents of Moneda Iberica. The MIP digital catalog brings together the monetary production of the Iberian Peninsula and the south of France, struck between the 6th and 3rd and 1st centuries BC. Over 220 cities minted coins and created over 4,000 types and variants. The name Moneda Iberica has only a geographical meaning and includes coinages struck by Greeks, Punics, Carthaginians, Iberians, Celtiberians, Basconians, Lusitanians, and Latins. But it's also linguistic because we also include the Gaulish coinages that use the Iberian script. Moneda Iberica has been developed by the Department of Prehistory, Archaeology, and Ancient History of the Valencia University and the Valencia Prehistoric Museum. It's important to remember here that the Moneda Iberica catalog became public in 2021, but it's the result of 40 years of work. It's a catalog of a dynamic nature with frequent content updates and improvements. The contents of the catalog are available in six languages. Over the past five years, the work team has involved at least 60 people, including teachers, researchers, museum curators, students, collectors, translators, and even family members. The first version of MIP was launched in 2021, and it has been registered as a database with an international standard serial number. This is important because collaborators get motivated as they obtain an official recognition of their contribution to, for their curricula. At the end of 2017, the Dedalo installation was ready and we started creating contents. This is the research system with login access based, based on web standards, designed to work in collaborative environments and with powerful capabilities for managing languages, users, and projects. However, the main goal is to publish a part of its contents through a public website. The MIP project deals with two different parts, the Dedalo research system and the website. This is important because only one third of the actual contents are public. The users have instant publication control over every record to decide the contents of the website. As far as the structure and contents of the catalog Moneda Iberica is concerned, the main goal is to create a knowledge base for documenting, archiving, studying, cataloging, and spreading the ancient numismatic heritage of the Iberian Peninsula and Southern Gaul from a broad and multidisciplinary historical perspective. MIB includes equivalences with types from previous catalogs and coins from books, papers, and auctions. The MIB Digital Archive contains 160,000 coins. Among these, two thirds provide the documentary basis for the MIB project while the rest correspond to provincial issues of Hispania, Roman Republican issues, or Let the Serai. These coins are part of the most important public collections, public auctions, and eventually from private collections. The system is also growing as new teams have started to create content for the late antiquity and medieval periods. The website contents are structured into different sections, Catalog, map, means, coins, hearts, finds, bibliography, and thesauri. We have also included among the contents metro methodological explanations of the criteria that we have followed to elaborate the catalog. 
An interesting detail is that MIB is the first digital catalog that displays the coins to their relative size. This is a classic feature of the numismatic tradition for the printed formats. The only difference is that the digital solution can't work with absolute sizes. In any case, just with the representation of coins on a relative scale, we get useful solution for understanding the series. Dedalo has developed different technological solutions for building a catalog of good quality. The first problem to be solved was to organize a hierarchical catalog in the manner of printed works. It was necessary to present the numismatic concepts with total freedom, without relying on a fixed structure. This was because terms sometimes need to be arranged in different ways, depending on the period or the circumstances. Geographical areas, cultures, means, authorities, series, types, and variants. This was an important technical achievement for the management system because the researcher has total freedom to organize the contents of the catalog. The hierarchy is built with contents from any section, and a simply click adds a new content. If necessary, the terms can be moved simply by dragging and dropping. This is exactly the same structure of the web. The only difference is that the top level of the web catalog is the mint. But on the web, it's also possible to browse the levels over the mint, visiting the, int, uh, the mint index section, as can be seen in the picture on the right. Its mint starts from the type number one, since we consider that it's more clear if each mint has its own numbering. The combined number mint type gives rise to unique references. The types include variants that are distinguished by letters. Each reference is accompanied by the key, a short text indicating the, dis the distinguishing feature of each type. Issues and types are identified by the signs, legends, or symbols applied to one or more denominations and sometimes by their meteorological standard. However, it's not always easy to establish objective criteria to distinguish them, since they often maintain a uniform meteorological standard and did not include distinctive elements. In many cases, types or variants can be only identified after stylistic features or epigraphic aspects. Filters allow you to perform different types of queries with predictive text as you type in the fields. Once you have made your request, a button, a button will appear at the bottom of the page, allowing you to share your search results. Another important feature is the establishment of equivalences among types from different catalogs. So the coins reference, referenced by any of them are always displayed together. This makes possible to perform searches after any of the different catalogs recorded in the system. The Mint introductions constitute a central part of the project. It is probably the most complete section since it contains a detailed introductory text with comments on the location, history, archaeological remains, designs, meteorological standards, denominations, and the chronological explanation of the series. Below the introduction is displayed the bibliography as well as reference links. Right down, a map shows the location of the mints and the coin finds. Finally, at the end appears the complete catalog of types. The types are illustrated with a selected specimen above all the coins that have been used to set the group, supporting the consistency of the type or variant described. This is very helpful for cataloging, especially when describing productions with a low degree of systematization. The implementation of this second level of information sets a substantial difference between the digital catalog and printed catalogs, normally with a single coin illustrated. In general, three groups of coins are present in the galleries to illustrate the type. 
museums and institutions, collections and auctions. The order of the coins can be arranged manually. The quantity of the coins illustrated depends on the rarity of each type. However, internally, the research system handles on average double of the coins published in the web. This is an example of the type number one of Salacia with 67 coins in the system and only 18 published in the web. The point here is that 30 coins out of 67 are marked as duplicates. Usually happens that coins are sold on auction several times. We have recorded every auction of Spanish ancient coins since the 70s, so we need to mark repeated specimens as copies. When this happens, it's good to keep separate records for the same coin because we can preserve the original information attached to each one. The good thing is that Dedalo is ready for setting the equivalences among identical coins. It is important to say that the weights and the measures of the duplicates are automatically discarded for the statistical calculations. This information can be displayed on the website. The first coin of this gallery was sold in Barcelona in 2004. In 2004, and 13 years was offered in another sale in the United States. The second one has been auctioned two times in the United States in four years. Tracking the sales has a great value, not for the catalog itself, but as a matter of heritage relevant information. The records with uh, the complete description of the coins constitute the basis of the project. In every coin, the description includes direct link to all types using the same design. In this case, it's also documented a countermark with the variant letter O. Countermarks constitute a very interesting topic that is currently under study by Pablo Cerda a collaborator of the project. The information is also arranged in a thesaurus where its countermark has a record where it's described in detail. Until now, we've recorded over 1,000 coins with countermarks. The initial estimation is that at least 100 different punches were applied over the variant coins. Most of the coinages present legends, normally city and personal names. For this reason, a major challenge was to achieve an accurate representation of the legends in Greek, Punic, Latin, and the three Paleo-Hispanic scripts, as well as unique glyphs and countermarks. This was an essential issue for a catalog such as MIB, because the Unicode standard does not provide a solution for presenting all these legends and variants it was necessary to build a system able to display unlimited glyphs, ligatures, or countermarks in any browser. In these circumstances, the solution adopted was to develop a specific tool for the management of any kind of script or symbol not available under the Nikov standard. Another way to browse the web and search the contents is the map. The red stars mark the position of the mints and the yellow circles the location of hoards and finds. In the case of mints with uncertain locations, the area in which it should presumably have been located is delimited with a dashed line with the only purpose of providing guidance. The MIP digital catalog is not intended to document findings in depth but many examples have been recorded during the research process. This uh, find, for instance, show the general description of the coin type and the specimens of the find are illustrated below it. The system provides stable URIs for the principal contents, the means, the types, and the coins. This is the only way to create any digital project on a reliable basis. basis. After four years of projects, some, con some contents have been updated, especially in the type section. Because of this, we store different versions of all the contents. 
So it's possible to browse back in time to check a previous version of any content. The web address indicates the version number you're visiting. These changes are due in part because the project benefits greatly from the contributions of users. The records include permanent links for sending suggestions, which help to improve the contents. Every section has a link to submit comments, so we make corrections and add new material by this means. The standard URIs always link to the last version of the contents. However, when visiting a record, the browser indicates by default the version you are visiting. By removing the version number, you get always the last version. So it depends on the user how to browse and cite the records. A big effort has been made to offer statistical information. The website also includes the analysis section for making dynamic queries after different criteria. The averages of weights, diameter, and axis are displayed with an infinite horizontal scroll when the results include many types. Its denomination is always represented by the same color, and this helps to compare, to track, and to check the consistency of the catalog. This section includes graphs of the average weight, average diameter, and i-axis. This is relevant information that it's also displayed under each type. By means of the bibliography, it's possible to give an appropriate recognition to previous research works. It contains over 7,000 titles of books and papers on the ancient numismatics of the Iberian Peninsula. The section holds a, number, a large number of PDFs, and the web user can perform text searches. The results display fragments of the publications, providing the context, the context where the term of the query is mentioned. Another feature is in development is uh, an output for the contents in PDF format in the style of traditional printed books. This issue is not easy to resolve, but we are working on it and we already have some promising results. The foundations of such a project should rely on sharing and linking contents. The web includes direct links to collections and museums when their coins are hosted at permanent web addresses. In this example, coins of Valencia, Paris, and Oxford are linked to their respective websites because their catalogs offer stable URIs. This is the result when clicking the link. It's up to the museums to make an effort to offer their collection in permanent addresses. The communication between projects is also a milestone for this kind of catalogs. The MIP project uses a well-known RDF, RDF format to send content to the ARC portal, the super aggregator of the Greek coinages. By sending from MIP this data package to the ARC portal, this portal is able to display the means of the Iberian Peninsula and to link the types with the MIP website. This is a fantastic solution for both projects, as ARC incorporates information from the MIP catalog and the later receives visits from the former, gaining both a wider audience. On a strictly technical level, it's necessary to remember that the contents of the website are completely independent of the management system. This configuration also allows the establishment of a solid basis for publication through an API. This is a powerful solution which serves to connect to Moneda Iberica to reuse the published information. It is a direct connection that allows third parties to retrieve any content by means of requests that return information that it's always up to date, as changes in the original source are immediately reflected in the destination. To conclude, this is a very big project and the result of a great effort. We keep growing, but we still have many corrections and improvements to do. Our resources are limited, but uh, and the time also, 
but the future looks promising as we try to extend the content to other periods. Thank you. Here we are. Thank you very much. This is uh, fantastic for this fantastic presentation. Um, I would like uh, uh, to open the floor to questions, if there are uh, any questions. Otherwise, I'll be more than happy to open the floor with some question for uh, Dr. Gonzalez. Are there any questions from our audience? Okay, so I'll begin. Uh, I'll begin with one thing, and I have two questions. So I'll begin with the first one. So um, I'm very interested in the contour marks, uh, the contour marks that you have, because as you know, of course, contour marks are um, are exactly very important also in provincial coinage, etc. So you are in some way. Uh, really pioneers in this. So um, the, the cataloging system that you're using for these uh, contour marks, is it based uh, on um, ASIP, so on the Villa, Villa Ronga Benages? So are you following the same numbering or not? No, well, in fact, there's no uh, good catalog for the mm -hmm. Uh, Republican countermarks of, of Spain. It's, it's uh, there is the provincial catalog, but for the mm -hmm. ancient communities, we didn't have a we don't have a catalog. There are some articles and some uh, lists, but not a real compilation with an archive behind of of this topic. Okay, uh, I mentioned that Pablo Cerda that is collaborating in the project. He's working this topic because it's very big. It's difficult. And it's, uh, it's going to be released, but uh, work in progress. Okay, it uh, will come soon, but it's not ready yet. But it's the first uh, serious catalog of Iberian countermarks. Will be the first. Thank you. Uh, this is fantastic. Hi, Peter Baug, and see you now. And thank you again for your uh, long table a few weeks ago. So this is. Another thing that is super interesting for me is there are another question from the um, uh, from the audience uh, is since you are very heavily uh, user based. So let's say you have uh, of course you have the scientific directors because I saw the I saw the structure you have these uh, gold contributors, silver contributors. So you really have uh, it's immediately visible. Uh, how people are contributing to this, which is a great idea because then, of course, as you said, but um, how are you vetting, let's say, the contributions of people who are not, you know, you or Perepao or other researchers, researchers that are, I mean, clearly accredited, so. Yeah, okay. Basically, it's about supervision, okay? It's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. you give a room to make things and then it's just to check that things are well done okay this is the main plan until now uh, of course the work scenarios are well controlled because usually are about the specific uh, topics or i don't know bibliography or uh, cataloging one mint or contribute with the uh, design or with the weights or so it's a very specific contribution. It's not about general arrangement of coins or types. Normally, the contributors are well focused on specific points topics. Okay, it's the normal situation. But in fact, the next movement is to normalize to a greater or to the next level this thing of editors, contributors, gold medal, silver, because. We need to fix in a more um, editor's board uh, this question. It's, uh, it was a first approach, but uh, we, it's the next moment in fact. So this, and it, 
in the future, maybe it's a good idea also to include the names of the contributors also in the records, okay? Because we have the list of the contributors, but the records only have the names in, in, in cases like the introduction of the means, the authoring, but for other kind of works, maybe it's possible also to recognize the contribution names. Hi. Um, are there any, I have a lot of other questions, of course, but are there any other uh, questions I do, that the audience wants to ask before I keep, uh, okay, so I'll keep going. I, I have a question, Lucia. Yeah, um, I'm just wondering with the listing of uh, of auction um, data, how wide a net is cast, about how far back is this, how many different auction companies are you are you attempting to include? Uh, is there a backlog and how how long does it take with current auctions going forward to get these uh, incorporated? Okay. In fact, this is this is the basis of everything. This is a lot of work. We the the good thing is the Iberian coinages are uh, are uh, affordable because we have limits clear. The limits are very clear, so we can keep the Spanish actions up to date with uh, <laughs> with an effort, with an extra effort, of course because we download manually every option and we prepare the images and we upload and we describe. We are not importing images or weights or from the auction houses directly. We, it's a manual work, okay? So this consumes a lot of time over the years. So this is why I said that for the archive, we have been working for you over the years for preparing the contents. And now only we have to keep up to date the actual actions, okay? And for the international houses, there are not so many variant coins, but we try our best to look and download, okay? But it's a manual work. It consumes a lot of time. Thank you. But the documentation is everything. It's, it's, it's the only way. Uh, we have a question from the audience. I don't know if Jeremy wants to unmute himself uh, and uh, and ask it directly. Otherwise, I will read it. Uh, no. Okay. Sure. Um, I, I it was just comment saying I, I really like how you're tracking the multiple auction appearances of the same coin specimen in the database, and I'm wondering how you handle cases where the metrics don't agree with one another across those different lot descriptions. So for instance, the weight, the diameter, or the diaxis of the coin. Uh, this is a good question. This is hard work because uh, in fact, it happens that when we check the analytics, uh, things that are described in one way, we have to change and many uncertain things. Uh, so we decide to describe things uh, uh, in, in some way, but of course we have doubts um, because uh, the analytics uh, gives us uh, some idea that uh, it's not so easy to have a decision about how to describe things, okay? Uh, this happens, this happens. I don't know if this, is, this was your question. Yeah, Sorry. yeah, that was it, thank you. Thank you very much. So, are there any other questions for uh, uh, Manuel? Okay, so in this case, uh, then I'll just thank you again for this fantastic uh, presentation, really, because this is, and also is really groundbreaking, the fact that you are um, that you have decided to include uh, all these auction sales, which is not, as you know very well, uh, is of course time consuming, but is also somewhat charged. Uh, so, and of course I would not agree more, uh, but that's great. So thank you very much for this uh, long table again. Uh, and, uh, 
we hope uh, I hope to see you soon and uh, we we will be following the success of this of this initiative really thank you so great thank you Lucia thank you bye bye thank you bye, bye.